Welcome to the destruction of the world. No, not really. This is just the introduction to Season 3 of League of Legends. With your neighborhood friendly Pokeprof and the dancing spider Akun. Hello. He's doing the can can. Oh, oh, ah! oh, oh. Killer spiders! Killer spiders! As you can see, we're back on to the beta where we played Rengar last time. Yes, a lot of champions have been introduced since then. Uh, look at my WoW video explaining what the hell happened in the last few months to really understand why we haven't been here. But a bunch of the changes for Season 3 have all been put in. The new champion is here. The new store is here with search function and everything, so I can go, you know, death cap and, oh, death fire grass, because that's right, death cap is no longer allowed here on a Dominion. They switched it out with the uh, twisted tree line item, which actually makes sense considering how fast this uh, Dominion goes. But anyway, we're here to show off the new champion, talk a little bit about the new items, and our personal thoughts on what's going to be happening with Season 3. And Aiken wanted to try out Elise without actually having to buy her on live. Meh. So anyway... Speaking of act actually, Aiken, what's your thought on Elise so far? Mm -hmm. She's fairly interesting. You liking her spider dance? Oh yeah. All right. So let's start off by going through all of Nami's abilities. Nami's passive starts out as Surging Tides. Whenever any of her abilities, be it offensive or defensive, afflicts her allies, they gain a Mooba speed buff. This scales starts off really uh, about like 30 or so at level 1, maxes out at 50 by level 18. Oh wow. They really nerfed at least the spiderlings. They max at 3 now. Oh no, they they get you get more of them as you level up your ults, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, at maximum level, I think you get like four or five spider I should tell you how, how familiar I am with this champion. Yeah. Anyway, her Q, as you've seen, is Aqua Prison. It's a skill shot, and once she lands a skill shot, or in this case, I missed, uh, it captures the enemy in a little bubble and lifts them up into the air, stunning them for a few seconds. I am not 100% sure if this stun is actually weakened by... Uh, by tenacity, I'm. I want to say no because it's lifting them up in the air. So I, I really don't know. But also does some decent damage. Not a huge amount of damage, but decent enough. Ebb and flow, which is her W, is actually the most abil interesting ability when she has. First off, kind of like uh, Lulu. She can cast it on her enemy or her allies, but unlike Lulu, um, it works a little bit different. If I cast it on myself, I heal myself. It's actually a pretty low cooldown heal, so that actually might be something that might turn out to be a little bit of an issue for Riot, because they said they dislike sustain. Then again, it's pretty low, so we'll have to see. If I cast it on my enemy, it does some damage. Now you actually saw the second effect right there. If I cast it on myself or an enemy and we're close enough, it actually goes straight to the enemy champion. And it will actually bounce between the ally and the enemy champion to a maximum of three times. Three times. Three times. I say stuff good, don't I? Yes, you English good. Anyway, this is probably the well. yeah. This is probably one of the main abilities that I can see uh, most Nami's leveling up first, being their Ebon Flow or their next ability, simply because Ebon Flow 
actually heals and gets stronger with level. Whereas Aqua Prison, it stays, I think, at that same stun the entire time. The stun doesn't get stronger as you level. Let's see. Now, Ebb and Flow is going to be a very scary ability. Not, excuse me, not Ebb and Flow. It's the next ability, Tide Caller's Blessing. It's going to be a very scary ability for one reason only. It's a um, attack that increases the auto attacks of either yourself or your allies. Now, think of it this think of it this way. We already got some champions like, say, Draven, who have a buff to their next attacks in the case of Draven's Q. So if I do this on top of Draven's thing, it's going to make Draven's Q hit hard. Because it adds a good 55 damage, plus whatever your AP currently is, on top of that. As you can see, I'm already doing some decent damage to Aikun, and I'm not even really seriously doing it. Ow. <laughs> yeah, at least does some pretty nasty damage with that blowing spider up. Kind of reminds me of Diablo 3 in a way, because of... Like the spider that the uh, what you call it has. Witch doctor. Thank you. But yeah, so you could probably see Ty Color's blessing being used for champions like Vayne and Draven, being your partners, and then the heal for anything else. Now the final ability is her ultimate tidal wave, and it is just as awesome as it sounds. Where are you, Aikun? I want to show it off. I'm coming back. I oh, you went back to base, so I couldn't kill you. They could get an idea of how much damage it can do. Well, in that case, I'm going to go back to base real quick and go get that item I was wanting to show off. Okay. Because I'll do the same. Because they've changed a butt-ton of the items. For example, Elisa's Miracle now has a very interesting ability I can see a lot of supports going and taking. This particular item change being the fact that it will actually passively buff your heal, revive, and clairvoyance cooldowns to where they are 20% lower. Gives you some nice health and mana regen, which, you know, supports need because they use their mana a lot. And if you gain three levels with this item on, it actually goes and is absorbed into the character and gives that the, basically the Elisa's Miracle for them passively throughout the rest of the game. That's probably one of the biggest items that I, I've seen changed. And one of the other new items is a Shard of the True Ice, which is basically a really nice support item that allows you to keep the gold per four throughout the entire uh, game and yes, it's gold per four now, not gold per five. Don't know why they nerf. I, I actually scratched that. I know why they nerfed uh, gold per five because ambient gold, the gold that you just earned from sitting still, has been increased in uh, Summoner's Rift. Now let's see. <clears throat> there are also boot enchants, which basically give you bonuses to depending on what boot you have. Uh, let's see, we've got... I'm not even going to pronounce that thing again because I know I screwed up last time I tried to pronounce it. Uh, Alaire City? Yeah. Let Akun pronounce it. He knows how to work his tongue correctly. <laughs> Which is just a flat Says movement... Says you. Yeah, it's just a flat movement buff on top of what you had already. Uh, distortion, which reduces the cooldown of your teleport, flash, and ghost. So I can see a lot of champions going for distortion. I'm honestly wishing they'll take off flash for that. Because I want flash to, like, never be used again. I'm so sick and... Well, not never used again, but I want it to be a very rare uh, skill. Fuhrer, which increases your movement speed whenever you attack. I love this on Ash. It is, like, really stupid powerful. Captain, which is good for tanky champions, which allows your allies to move to you faster. Also allows your minions to move faster by you. And then finally, one last one called Home Guard, which is like gives you a stupid movement buff while you're on the platform. And a matter of fact, that uh, was 
gave Ramus his new top movement speed. I think Ramus's new top movement speed is actually, uh, pardon the pun, over 9,000. Very likely. Let's see, let's grab a Thien's. They nerfed the Thien's a little, but they actually lowered the price some so that I can understand that. Around. Yeah, 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 I hear ya. Nami was being testy. She was like, come on, get your ass moving. Interesting. It's like, people are here to see me. They're not here to listen <laughs> to you talk. But yeah. See, other than that, we also have... We also have the Total Biscuit item is finally in the game. We have the Total Biscuit of Rejuvenation. This is an item that you get only by going into the Mastery... Um, uh, the utility mastery tree. You actually have to go pretty deep into it, I think. Okay, so where are you, Aiko? I thought are I could buy something. Are you in the bush? Short. So. You are not in the bush. Eight legs short. <laughs> now the one thing I found the most interesting about Tide Collar was the fact that this and actually a few other items uh, that are new both do the same thing to where it's like for the next X attacks or for the next X seconds you'll get this ability. I just found that really interesting for them Here's to an do. interesting one for you. The hell? Shard of True Ice surrounds an ant an ally with a blizzard for four seconds that slows nearby enemies' movement speeds for 30%, 60 second cooldown. That's interesting. I thought it was actually based on, like, on an another champion, not on minions. You can toss it on anything. That's an really? ally. Because I have that thing too. Well, I'll be damned. Yeah. And it actually moves with the. Minion, wow, neat. That uh -huh. makes the item so much better, even. Alright, I think we've put it off long enough. Oh, what the hell hit me? Oh, no wow, idea. no, I, nothing hit me. That was uh, me absorbing the uh, Elisa's Miracle. Oh, interesting. So now if you click me, I actually have that buff on my character to where you see Elisa's Miracle, or Elisa's Essence. So you can actually go and make a new item if you really wanted to. So you can like put an Elisa's Miracle, then grab another Philo Stone and make um that speed boosty item. Which really is Rivery? Yeah. I'm so sad that I actually forgot the name of it. <laughs> Alright, I think I've held it off long enough. Let's show them Tidal Wave! I love that ability. That is like the most awesome -est ability in League of Legends so far. I mean, really, I know it's like a Hecarim ult where she doesn't really move. But I just think it to be... It, it just looks really cool. It's like a ta giant surge of water heading to just swallow your enemy whole. And honestly, that, the cool thing is, is that works with your passive. So all your allies that your Tidal Wave passes through, they get a movement buff. All the enemies, they get knocked up, slowed, dealt damage, and kind of like Ash's ult, uh, Tidal Wave actually slows depending on how far the wave has traveled. So the further it travels, the more uh, it slows the enemy versus Ashes, which just flat out stuns. Let's see... Da -da -da -da. In their the Boneyard has been neutral. Oh, that's yours. Now, let's see. The Total Biscuit of Rejuvenation is basically an extra potion for, you know, in general. Not that big of a thing, and you would think something f like for TB would be a bigger item, but meh.
How far does that actually go? That goes pretty far. <laughs> We're just trying to kill each other now. <laughs> I'm healing and you're not. No, Tanky, I am not. Overall, though, I think Nami is actually going to be a very... Uh, she's going to be a bit of high skill cap support champion, but she's also going to be a very powerful support champion, especially if her heal stays this low. Because it's like every every six seconds I'm able to heal at maximum rank. And it also does some decent damage against the enemy as well. And that Q does some decent damage. Holy hell. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is I think I, a lot of people are going to be playing her as mid for the moment. Because that's what a lot of people will do, is that they'll play characters as mid as not supposed to be. Flop, flop. I love her death animation. She's like, flop, flop. Now, the one, the two things I want to say before we end this off, because we've already been going for some odd 20 minutes now, is I want to say two things. One, um, I actually think Nami is partly inspired by the character Nanami from, uh, from, uh, Okamiden. Which in turn was actually based from a character from, I want to say, Japanese mythology. I'm not 100% sure. Ooh. Sorry for that frame drop, people. It's beta. Beta is beta. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting Tidal Wave to kill you. <laughs> but... I, that's what I, I've always honestly... Th that's what I personally think Nanami is based... Uh, no, bleh. Nami is based off of. Because, I mean, because Nanami is a mermaid. Is based around water, including tidal waves and all that other junk. And... It just seems like a very similar character, especially in terms of name. And it just could be me. I just could be silly. Because, frankly, I am. And then the other thing that I've heard a lot of people say that I have to kind of agree with, I'm not sure what Aikun's thoughts on this, is oh. Nami shares a lot in common with Janna. Oh, yeah. I mean, two different knockups, a heal. Holy shit. That hurt. Just think, I didn't get my fruit full burst off. Yeah, and you got that Morella. You got the Morella Amicon thingy. The Morella Amicon. Because, yeah, they actually changed Morella's item to where now you don't actually have to activate it to weaken healing. Mind you, you can only weaken healing now when they're lower health wise, but it's still a pretty decent ability. Anyway, overall, she seems like she's going to be a very decent support champion. I can see everyone trying to play her AP. And to be honest, her Q actually does some decent damage. I mean, her Q right now, I've got 311 AP, and her Q is doing uh, uh, an extra 202 damage. I'm not 100% sure what the actual ratio on that is, but that's actually pretty high, I think. Yeah, fairly high. Memory serves. Yeah, so I can see a lot of people going AP on her just because of that, and then kind of going the whole uh, Oriana route, where they kind of like... Because Oriana, even though she goes as an AP champion, 
She's a champion that has high supportive capabilities. So you'll usually see her run with that. Going through some of the other items. Can you actually look I Oh yeah, you can actually look up items by there are stats now a lot easier. I honestly think they need to buff Spirit Visage a bit more if they're going to keep um, the other item removed from the game. Uh, sure as the force of nature. Actually, it would do some good to actually buy some items, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Ability power, cooldown reduction. Give me the Morella. Morello Nomicon. And if you... Basically, I repeat that one saying I remember reading in a story once. If it has Nomicon at the end of it, it's probably evil. Uh, anyway. So what do you think, Akun, about Nami? I'm curious about your thoughts on Elise, too, since we didn't really do this. Well, Elise is fairly fun. I almost want to call her a little bit more mobile version of uh, Cassiopeia or something like that. Your team has captured the or baby. perhaps... Uh, the I'm trying to think of a, a champion who's really good at like single target burst. Well, that's not Cass. Cass specializes more in AoE, especially with her ulti. Uh, single... Oh, she's got a bit of AoE, that's the thing. Well, so does Annie, but Annie is more about blowing a one target up. Mm. Gonna get you. No, I nope. didn't. I still hear the song of the sea. Uh, but really, I see Nami being very powerful. I see her being, I see her being exceptionally dangerous with champions with auto attack amplifi amplifier. So, uh, Draven, especially since she's a support. That's my mind you. That's if ranged AD uh, support bot is actually going to be the same anymore. Because I honestly don't see it being the same anymore with all these item changes. Because one of the big item changes is the fact that they lowered they lowered the uh, price of eight flat AD, and they increased the price of attack speed. So I can see a oh damn you! No, run away! Run away! Run away! Oh no! No! Ah! Ah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had to burst you down at least once. Oh, and I completely forgot the stupid uh, Wooglitz Witch Cap. I don't play Twisted Tree Line all that much, so I didn't know about it. Um, basically, is the old Zanya's ring. So I could have hit it to be immortal for a turn. Meh. Mm. Oh, oh! Uh, we forgot to show off Twin Shadows. Oh, that's right. Um, I didn't build it, did you? did you? I did. Okay, good. Yeah, Twin Shadows is one of the more interesting oh, items in the game. It does not work on stealth champions, which is kind of sad. But here, let me move up here, and you'll use it. Basically what it does is that it sends out a little uh, ghosty to go and find the enemy players. It will actually send out two. We just have the one because, you know, we're just two v two, one on one here. Bleh. And it will go and slow them down and give sight, which is really good if you're trying to basically find a person that flashed. I think it actually a base terrain because it looks like it was, you know, walking around the terrain to get me. We are all tied right. to the ocean. So, uh, that's interesting. Nami actually has a different animation depending on how her faster movement speed is. People are counting on me. Hmm. Well, she's not the only champion who does that. Um, 
I think Sejuani does that as well. And a lot of the newer champions do it. Boom. Explosive. Ah. <laughs> I weed. But yeah, I think Sejuani. Sejuani. Wrong champ. Sejuani. <laughs> Well, actually, believe yes. it or not, Sejuani does is going to be a little bit more powerful in Season 3. Simply because they changed the items enough to where there's actually items with stats she wants. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, though, I'm Plus really... The, they've uh, been adding a lot more spe character-specific items, like uh, Mikkel's Crucible. Yeah. That, that's going to be very interesting. Definitely a Blitzcrank type item. Blitzcrank's gonna want it. Rise is gonna love it. You know, any because mm. it's a mana item. Anything that gives mana is gonna be something that Rise wants. Overall, I'm really looking forward to Nami. I'm really looking forward to season three, especially. I wonder how soon they're gonna pull it out. No, you dodged it. Run away! Run the hell away! Meh. <laughs> Be cold. Be frozen. Meh. Meh. I don't like spiders. But yeah. Uh, any final thoughts, Akun? Oh, these champions are definitely getting more interesting in Season 3. And we're done but with... But there's always going to be the people who are going to treat it like a house on fire. Any kind of change, so... True. Guys, be a little bit more positive in thought. I mean, Riot knows what they're doing. Or at least, they're going to learn what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah. Don't assume that it's going to be bad just because it's changed. No, I must kill you! You know, for the fact that we're just fooling around, you did a lot of damage with that bite of yours. Holy hell. Yes, yes I do. Oh, that's right. That's because it's a frickin' execute, doy. <laughs> Anyway, my personal final thoughts is that I'm honestly looking forward to Season 3, not because of, like, you know, the new champions, more the new item changes, simply because of the fact that... Uh, We're going to be breaking up the Dorans and crap like that. Well, the Dorans have already been really weakened. The thing I'm really excited is the fact that with the... With AD being cheaper and attack speed being more expensive, champions like Pantheon will actually be able to see some use again. Because he specialized really in getting a lot of AD and then getting tanky. Yep. He actually has that option now. Take my, take my title away. Huh. My Q wouldn't target you. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> I think that's a good point to end it on, don't you? Yes. Wait, oh wait. well, dance for a spider to end us off. Uh He's a spider. I'm a dead mermaid. We'll see you later, guys.